In this last video, we're just going to do a little bit of fine tuning. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the look of this website so far. So the last thing you do is you take a look at what you've got and see what you could do to make it better. So I'm looking at a few things here with these links. I wish they could be the color that I had planned for them to be. But I understand that the internet has a series of link colors that are established. So I'm going to see here, let's get these links with some space between them so you can see them, if I could make a little change. And on my index.html, you can see that this is the attribute, right? href equals index.html. I'm going to add one more attribute, and it will be the style attribute, style equals, and here I'll say text hyphen decoration colon, and I'll choose none. There's my semicolon. I'm going to add another style that says color, and let's see, what was my text color for the green? There it is. So color text decoration color goes right here and semicolon and save let's see what that looks like there I think that looks better it's much cleaner looking so I'm going to add that same thing to five topics and contact it's a lot of copying and pasting one I'm going to add it to the five topics. That's this one. Skip a space. Add the style equals. I'm going to add it to the contact. Skip a space and add that. Save. There. I just feel like that looks a lot cleaner. So in order to make this the same on both pages, copy it from index and get it on it's just the A tags. Save. And let's look and see how that looks. Very good. Much better. There's my contact. Let's see if that's working. Yeah. Takes me right to my email. Uh, I'll hit the back button here. So another something I'm noticing is that this blue section, even though uh, green is made of blue and yellow, I feel like there could be a little more unity here. So I'm going to look at my H3 and see if I can make them this same text color. So I'm building unity in my website. I'm going to copy the green text color and go to my H3 and put style equals color colon paste semicolon save. Let's see what that looks like. And there it is. It looks much better, I think. So I might do that to all of the H3s. I'll just copy the start tag for H3. So this is a little bit of busy work, but this is something that, as a website designer, you're going to need to pay close attention to. It's these little details are what makes the difference between a website that has unity and is therefore fun and exciting to read. I think that's all I have. Five topics, right? One, two, three, four, five. Now let's look at the index page and do the same thing h3 paste this one's quicker because they're so much closer together all right do a save take a look at page one much better unity yes all right the next thing i want to show you is that there is another tag you could add and I'll put it underneath this, between this headline and that number one. And that is another empty element, and it's called the HR tag. 
Let's see what it looks like. There, just a line. I think it'll look better if it's a little shorter. So I'm going to say, give it a style equals and width 20%. Oops. Let's see what that looks like. There, that's nice. The HR tag. It's very handy. Um, another something I thought about is on this page. I think these images are just big. So I'm wondering if uh, where I have width as 100%, where do I have that? I might change that to something like 70%. But something else I'm noticing is that this is an HTML attribute. And I believe that it is deprecated. What does that mean? It means that W3Schools doesn't really like for us to use that anymore. How can I show you that it doesn't? Let's do a validation. Control A, Control C. I'll get a new tab and I'll type W3Schools. Validator. You should bookmark this. I have it bookmarked too, but I guess I just didn't go to that. I'm going to validate by direct input and I'll paste my code here and then say check. So let's see what it found for errors. There it is. The first error is um, oh, I didn't add lang equals en to the top of this page, so let's do that. HTML, the language attribute. Save. Okay, that error is taken care of. What's the second one? Oh, the title is empty. See, it's catching me on all these things. I'll just name the title what the H1 is. Five topics to learn about. Copy and paste. Save. Do I have, a, oh, here are the other ones. These are all those images. So what they're saying is they prefer for me to use the style attribute. So let's do that. Instead of making it, um, let's see, that's on page two. So the first image here says width equals 100%. I'll say style equals, and there are my quote marks, width colon. And here I'll say, let's say 70%. I think that's going to be a lot better. And I'm going to just copy this style attribute to all of the images in place of the width equals 100%. This is now style equals width 70%. I think it's a much better way to go anyway. W3Schools is the group that uh, mandates what code should look like. And they share it with all users, all coders in all countries. 70, 70, 70, 70. I may have another one here. Now I'll do a save and Command A, Command C. Let's go back to this. Command A, delete, Command V. All right, document checking completed, no errors to show. There is, however, one more thing I want to show you, and that is, I suppose we could look at the images at 70%. I think that's a little better. They do take up a lot of space. We've done a few things that help by fixing our background by setting the width because you know you would never want someone to read and have to read an internet page where text stretches all the way from over here to all the way over here. You always want to make it a width that's a readable length. But the other thing I want to show you is, and I'll do it back to the top, I'll do it underneath that. So this is on page two and I'm going to go underneath back to the top. There it is right there. Let me give myself some space. So I want to show you a couple of things that are just tags to look at. I bookmarked a poem here. I don't know if you know Edna St. Vincent Millay, but she wrote in the state of Maine. She lived in Maine. And this is one of her most famous poems. I'm going to copy it. 
and I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to do a save and let's look at it. So there it is, all in one line. But this is what I wanted to show you. It's a pretty cool tag. It's called the pre tag, it stands for pre formatted. When I put that on, you'll see, let me save, that it will maintain the line breaks that I chose. And there they are. It's also maintaining the center that is part of the main because the main tag is its parent. So the pre-tag, if you're copying and pasting text, is very helpful. There are a few other helpful tags, or not helpful, but just good to know. There's the mark tag. And look how I'm doing my nesting right like a sandwich save what mark does is it makes it highlighted i don't know i can't think of a design reason to want to do that but it's good to know right you know what the mark tag is now there's also the del tag which could stand for delete i think it does but it doesn't delete the text what it does is it crosses it out so look, pre, mark, and delete. Two more tags, two more quick ones. SUP, which stands for superscript. And SUB, which stands for subscript. Let's see what that looks like, just so you know. So, Superscript puts the word up at the top. Subscript puts them at the bottom. You might need this if you're ever typing H2O or this if you're ever adding footnotes. But those are just a few extra tags that I wanted to teach you. I will certainly not leave this poem on my website. And that is it for your lesson today.